Experienced sound people are invaluable for musicians. If only because oftentimes as musicians, we know what we want, we just don't know how to use the gear to get it. So an experienced sound person will listen to our sonic request, they'll interpret it, use their knowledge of the gear and manipulate the gear to give you back what you're asking for as a musician. That's invaluable. And when those people aren't there and we have to run sound ourselves, it can be a little frightening. So the M20D actually has a bunch of that know-how built in. It's almost like you have a virtual sound person in your mixer, because in some instances, it can respond to requests in much the same way. So these two videos are gonna deal with the channel strip, the tweak page of the M20D. This video will deal with the TweakPad UI, the EQs, and the four master effects units. The next video will deal with the dynamics processing. So remember, these are auto-sensing jacks. So as soon as I plug a cable into one, the mixer will automatically create a channel strip for me and give me the opportunity to use one of the images down in the carousel to create a custom DSB channel strip for that kind of instrument. So let's dive in. Let's start by creating a channel strip. So I'm just gonna plug in a cable to number seven because that's where I've got the vocal. So if I push play and Maybe bring up the vocal. Sing the blue. Nice dry vocal, sounds good. Another color but we can change it you. by applying one of these presets from the carousel. Maybe the male with red. reverb. Sometimes I go out of my head. So you can see that it shaped it. It's already EQ'd it, it's added some reverb. It's basically done to it what I would have done had I started off tweaking it in the first place. So let's go to the tweak page. Now I imagine this doesn't look like you'd expect the channel strip of a mixing console to look, but that's actually by design. So by default, it comes up to quick tweak mode and you have these XY pads that are populated with words, not numbers and values. The idea here is if you know what you want, but you don't really know how to get it, you can ask the console to help you out. If you want your vocal to project, if you want it to be full sounding, if you want it to have air, or if you want it to have a lot of clarity, you can move your finger along the pad towards the word that best describes what you want, and the console will move multiple parameters underneath the hood to try to give you what you're asking for. Case in point. My baby likes to sing the blue. Try to get some more projection. Another color she can Maybe use make it full and warm. To make me see red. Maybe some air. Sometimes I go out of my head. Or maybe a lot of clarity. Cause my baby takes it out on me. You get the idea. So this kind of behavior works for all the processors. So tone is EQ, punch is the dynamics, deesser is deesser, which we'll cover in the other video, and also the global effects. Now, if you decide that you really want to see what the real values are underneath the hood, you can go to deep tweak. And once you get to deep tweak, you can see what's really going on. So all the stuff over here on the left are the processing blocks. And it's just like an inline console. The signal comes in top and goes through all these things in line. You can choose the actual DSP algorithm that you're using to process your instrument. Now we've chosen the mail with reverb preset, and there are a ton of presets in here, of course. And it's chosen a set of uh, DSP algorithms for me, but I can change that. So if I decide that I don't want two dynamic EQs, I'd rather have a de-esser and dynamic EQ, I can do that. If I'd rather have a, a bass boost, or if I'd rather have a multi-band compressor, all sorts of stuff. You have tons of different options for processing your individual channels. Now remember, we're just doing everything but dynamics in this video, so we're gonna start at the top, so on the input tab, you have the invert polarity button. You have auto trim and trim tracking for which there's a separate video. You have the high pass filter, which reduces on stage rumble. Now the invert polarity button, uh, traditionally that gets used in a couple different ways. If you're miking the top of a snare drum and the bottom, traditionally you take the bottom snare mic out of phase to make sure that it remains in phase with the top. If you've got a bass guitar cabinet that you're miking and you're taking a direct feed off the bass, sometimes those will be out of phase. So as a general rule, if you ever pull up two tracks together that are from the same instrument and all of a sudden all your bass goes away, try inverting the polarity on one of those tracks to see if it goes away. That'll help. Now, even though the gate is indeed a dynamics processor, I figured we could cover it here. Um, so let's see here, we'll pull that down a little bit, turn it on. And the idea behind a gate is that it's supposed to shut the signal off when there's nothing happening. My baby likes to sing the blue. Turns it off. Another color she can use. Turns it off. Make me see 
red. It's actually nice. Now that works really, really well on things like kick drums, on loud guitars, stuff like that. Sometimes on vocals where there's a loud drum kit standing right near the vocal mic. That's very, very helpful. So the de is dynamics. We'll cover that next. Dyne EQ is dynamics. Comp is dynamics. And then you get to the six band parametric EQ. You have control over the gain, the frequency, and the bandwidth, or the Q, for each one of these bands, and you can interact with it the same way you do with the rest of the UI. So, my baby likes to sing the blue. Maybe you want to change the bandwidth, the Q, to wider. Another color she can use. That way you can pull out a little less gain. To make me see red. There you go. So you have the ability to interact with this EQ in much the same way you would with all of the rest of the processors. Now you can tell there's some reverb going on, and that's because there's four global effects units on the console. You can get to them by hitting the global effects button. So there are four, and they're designed to do different tasks. So you've got number four, which is just delays, and you've got a bunch of different types of delays. You have number three, or C, which is just modulation, so choruses, doubling, flanging, that kind of stuff. Number two, is for shorter reverbs, meaning ones that don't have 10 second decays kind of stuff. And then number A is for your thick, gooey, chewy reverbs. So uh, FX A is the one that was chosen for this preset. My baby likes to sing the blue. You can go arena if you want. Another color she can use. You go, David Beckham. You got the cave. Make me see red. You can tell the tails are really nice and natural sounding. Sometimes I go out of my head. Now, if you wanted to go for the shorter style, Cause my baby takes it sometimes that works better depending on what you're doing. Now, if you want to look at the parameters for those reverbs, you can do that too. They have their own tweak pages. So you've got control over pre-delay, which means the length of time it takes from the onset of the note for the reverb to kick in. You have the actual decay time of the reverb, which means how long it takes to die away. And you have the high cut, meaning how much treble or, uh, or high-end material is being filtered out of the return of the reverb to keep it out of way of all the other instruments. So My baby likes to sing you can make it blue. happen later. Another color she can use to make me you can also take and make red. the decay as long as this model will allow, which is uh, almost two Sometimes seconds. Sometimes I go out of my head which is pretty dang powerful. Now you can go back to your Mail with Reverb channel. You can see that there's a lot of flexibility on a channel strip to be able to control any kind of instrument you might connect to the M20D. The next video is gonna cover all the dynamics processing.